Hi and welcome to the workshop. It's Joe ZL1 PMY and today we've got this uh, Yezu VL1000 linear amplifier. It uh, consists of two units, the actual tuner unit and the amplifier is the top one and the bottom one is the power supply and uh, at the moment it's uh, just refusing to turn on, nothing happens and um, as I've repaired these before I know exactly what the problem is hopefully I know what the problem is and uh, I'm going to show you what it is now there used to be um, a video on YouTube about this problem but I had a quick look and I can't find it so I thought oh, well maybe I'll put one on myself just to show the owners of these things um, what to do uh, now we have to actually state this is not an instructional video and that um, switch mode power supplies especially when they're issuing 2.5 kilowatts of power uh, are very dangerous to work on and I'm not recommending that any of you actually do repairs but I'm going to show you the process it sounds easy changing a couple of fuses but it's about three hours work so um, here we go let's get into it and I'll, I'll explain what is what So we um, we got the power pack top off, and these this is the innards, two fans at the back, um, a connection block here for the power input control, uh, and a mass of screws. I think you have about 50 screws from memory to take out to get to the actual part that uh, needs replacing. Assuming, of course, it is that part. There's no way of testing it is or it isn't until you get in there. So uh, I'm afraid you just got to take it apart. So I'll do that off camera, it's quite boring. And um, I'll get back to you when uh, you can see the inside. So if you take the lid off, and then uh, there are nine screws in the bottom plate, the bottom lid, uh, that you take out. But you need to support the weight of the power pack, which is quite a big lump. There it is. And then... Um, you can disconnect the terminal blocks here and the IO board and on this side the mains input and the two wires which go to the on off switch and you then finish with the case and you can start working on the power supply unit itself which is completely wrapped in aluminium so we're going to start taking that apart next So with the, the fans facing downwards and the 48 volts output on the left um, you remove all the screws in this bottom panel and take the side panel off here and the two items you want to get to are these two white ceramic resistors here uh, assuming that you've got the same problem that uh, is on this amplifier we presume you can't, you can't quite get test probes in here to, to measure them and once you've got that uh, plate off I'll just move it off now um, the um, main switching power supply this this chassis here should lift off and out the way and then you need access to this PCB to actually uh, test those and uh, replace them if you've got uh, the bits in stock which I think we might have okay so by removing the screws from around the edge of the bottom lid you can actually swing that PCB out and that gives you access to the two components which are usually the cause of it not switching on and here they are just zoom into that but I'll come back and refocus there we go, just turn one of those around and you'll notice it says that it's um, 10 ohms and uh, when you read them they're open circuit but they're not just a 10 ohm resistor in the package there's a resistor in series with a thermal fuse and the thermal fuse is not resettable so once you blow that thermal fuse um, that will never repair itself you've got to change these blocks 
and the reason for these blocks I'm going to get the circuit up on the computer and uh, we'll take a look at that now so from the circuit manual uh, there's no breaker shown in this uh, diagram because the breaker is a chassis component but this is the normal um, AC mains input filter because it's a switch mode power supply and here you'll see there are three resistors uh, R2A, R2B, R2C and they are in fact shorted out by this relay which is driven from 12 volts produced by the power supply now the um, the manual states that this 48 volt supply is capable of delivering 48 amps and there are um, I think 10,000 microfarad uh, smoothing capacitors in the output i.e. 10 capacitors of 1,000 uh, microfarad each uh, and that will give you a large inrush current uh, normally uh, where you get a large inductive load or a large capacitive load and you plug that straight into the mains there is always the chance that it will blow either the fuse or the trip and so um, these resistors are put into circuit so that when you apply the mains power uh, they will slowly um, charge the capacitors and start the power supply working and once the power supply produces uh, 12 volts there's an RC time constant here there's a resistor here which is just off screen and that charges up this capacitor and eventually that relay will turn on shorting out those resistances which by this time will be quite warm um, now uh, the problem these amplifiers suffer from is if you turn them off and then back on again um, those uh, capacitors will recharge the uh, those resistors will recharge the capacitors again and again and so the temperature on those builds up until the point that it trips the thermal fuse um, and that thermal fuse is not resettable so I'm just going to swap screens and I can find the thing and this is what those resistances actually look like inside the ceramic package there is a resistor of some value in this case it's 10 ohms and a fuse which is thermally connected to that resistor and um, if, if the uh, little relay didn't click in or the charge circuit didn't work this package would get so hot that it opens that fuse as a safety device but it doesn't reset and therein lies the problem so I'm going to be looking at a modification a possible modification for these later on but at the moment I just need to repair this one and get it working okay so uh, we've got the new devices fitted I also changed the electrolytic uh, across the relay uh, which holds it in um, part of the RC time constant um, also soldered up the pins on the big relay the relay that bypasses these resistors they looked a little bit dry um, the main cause of these resistors going is simply turning on and off in rapid succession um, and being on an island here our mains power supply is not great and you do get brownouts and flickers and, and I believe that's the, the root cause of it um, the owner has run this on a UPS um, since these resistors went the last time so it's survived uh, probably two years but maybe the UPS is getting a bit jiggered now who knows so we're on the route to putting it back together uh, there's all the screws I did mention there's a lot of screws to take out and then we'll be able to uh, to test it and uh, get it back to the uh, user so here we are with it all back together have we been successful well we won't know till we push the button let's do that now and I heard a click and we can turn the power on at the top and hmm
Well, there was a definite click. I think there might be a switch on the back that says remote start. Let me go and have a look at that. Well, it certainly helps if you put the control cable in. So, um, let's try that again. Try and get a better handle. Just pressing the main button. And there she comes on. Going through its boot menu. Very hard display, a terrible display on these things. Orange in colour. But yeah, we're alive and well. So no doubt the owner will be chuffed till he gets the bill. <laughs> so uh, yeah, as I said uh, initially, um, I'm not recommending that uh, you dive into these things and repair them. They can be quite dangerous. Um, the first thing that happens in any switch mode supply is the mains goes in. 230 volts AC, it's usually fully rectified, producing 400 volts DC at the top of the switching network and that is certainly a lethal voltage. You don't want to come across that. Um, yeah, my idea of using possibly a thermistor, the problem is the protection it's got is both um, inrush current limiting and thermal protection. Um, and if only they made those with uh, resettable fuses once the temperature had gone down, that would be good. So if this one comes back, uh, I'm certainly not going to go to uh, another three hour period changing those resistors um, without coming up with a modification so it never happens again. So there you go. Anyway, thanks for watching and I uh, hope you're all safe and well. This is Joe ZL1PMY signing off.